Hey everyone, my name is Yaro and you're listening to the Daydream Force podcast. Honestly, this episode is so exciting to me. I loved speaking to my friend Janelle Hardy again. She's been on the podcast in episode 35. So if you want to hear more about her story, definitely check that out. But this episode is much more experimental and exciting and wild. So we did some writing together and we loved a ton. I was sweating like crazy because we were in a heat wave. And I just was so inspired by the way that Janelle teaches and how she really helps us embody our writing in a deeper way. So she is going to be offering a program starting this summer called Personal Myth Making that I'm taking myself. And so if you're interested in memoir writing, definitely check that out. Next week she's also running a free workshop and she has a ton of free resources in um, that area, like worksheets for example, that can get you started. So that's something I love about the way we run businesses and I mentioned that at the end that the way we spread the word about what we're offering is often by sharing free resources and so maybe this program is right for you this summer in which case I'm so excited to introduce you to it um, but maybe it isn't but you might still benefit so deeply from this um, episode and might want to check out her free resources so yeah um, this episode is probably one that you can better listen to when you have pen and paper ready and um, that would be fun then you can write along you can pause the recording if you like and take more time with the writing prompts but even if you can't if you're traveling right now it might be really fun to listen to and just pause for a moment and think about the questions and then you can look, come back to them later if you like just a few notes from me. Um, what can I tell you about my life? It is quite nice right now. I'm still in Hamburg, my hometown. The heat wave is gone. I'm traveling to Scotland next week, which I'm very excited about. I am kind of letting the DIY small business school hibernate for next month. Um, I'm not inviting new signups at the moment because I'm relaunching it in August and I'm more um, cozy and <laughs> intimate way um i love that we are in mighty networks now and i really just want to give us more of an opportunity to connect and to have gentle accountability so i'll be offering um quarterly business planning workshops as part of the school and um, there'll be optional weekly writing prompts um, you get the chance to form a small mastermind if you want um, there will be monthly group coaching calls and then there will be six live workshops each year so in total 22 life workshops every year lots of things and that's mainly because i really believe so deeply in the core of the programs and i'm also re-recording and adding some videos and worksheets but i also am seeing that people need more support to actually implement stuff so that's what this change is going to be all about and i hope you'll keep stay tuned for that and join us if you like um, there's also exciting things happening for Daydream Revolves. I'm updating the magic of embodiment in September. I'm going to start a whole new cycle and I'll tell you more about that when I have more information. But for now, I'm just going to let you enjoy my wonderful friend Janelle. Um, yeah, and I'm wishing you a really beautiful, transformative ec eclipse season. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> I have my wonderful, wonderful friend Janelle Hardy with me today. Um, I can't tell you how much I love her work in so many ways. I've been in a mastermind with her for about two years now, so I've seen her b being on this journey, and I love listening to her podcast. I've been on it myself. It used to be called um, Wild Elixir, and now it's called Personal Myth, Myth Making. I really think you would love it too. Janelle just has a ton to share about well, myth making and fairy tales and writing and body work. And yeah, I'm just excited to share her with you again. Um, if you want to, you can listen back to episode 35 if you just want more of Danelle. I know I do, um, but you can also check our website out and everything's going to be linked to in the show notes. And um, just to let you know, we will be doing an exercise today, but I think you can do this any way you like. If you don't have pen and paper ready, that would be a shame, but you could come back to it. Or if you're currently traveling as you're listening to this, you can just take a quiet moment with the questions that we're sharing and then maybe you can come back to them if you like. But either way, I think you'll get a lot out of this. And yeah, I'm excited for Janelle to introduce herself. Hi, welcome. 
Hi. <laughs> I feel so loved. <laughs> and somehow I don't understand how two years has already passed by in our um, mastermind. Um, I want to rename that, but mastermind group. Yeah. <laughs> Hive mind, heart weaving, something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> something that doesn't say master. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Yeah. And think or about mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, tell us what you do. What what is your most beautiful expression of yourself? Oh, okay. Um I think my most beautiful expression of myself for myself is being, being able to sleep till I wake, <laughs> which I almost never get to do because I'm not a morning person, but I have a child that has to get to school at a certain hour and there are life obligations that force me to wake up early. So my personal most beautiful expression <laughs> of myself, which happens every weekend, is not having an alarm clock on, having my phone off and sleeping until I wake. And then I just feel like things are right. And, and it, it also means I miss out on um, stuff that my early bird friends and family want to do. But I honestly don't care. I love sleeping in. <laughs> Me too. And then what I do do in my work in the world is I am a transformational memoir writing teacher. And I'm the creator of an five-month online course called The Art of Personal Myth-Making. And um, what excites me about this course and what I do is mostly that, <clears throat> excuse me, somehow, um, without me having to get super brainy and figure it out, all of the different threads of interest in my life of creativity, creative life force, art-making, plus movement, um, body, the body work training that I have, hands-on um, structural integration training, um, and my studies in dance, and, um, and writing and life story, and um, understanding self through a deeper context that includes culture, and cultural background, and history, and all the things that explain why we are where we are in the world, essentially speaking the languages that we do. Um, <clears throat> all of these interests have come together into this course. And so I just love that <laughs> I get to support people in working with their life stories, in writing their memoirs, but also in healing and transformation, while also talking about fairy tales and myth and anthropology and all the weird and wonderful resources I find out on the internet that are relevant to what I'm teaching and um, bringing all my anatomy knowledge and movement knowledge and body-based um, trauma-informed nervous system type knowledge into the mix. <laughs> so that's like the long short version of what I do and why I really enjoy it. Mm, yes, thank you so much for sharing. I love that. Should we start with a little exercise maybe? I'm super ready. I want to tell everyone actually where I'm at physically because I'm in a heat wave in a city and I'm sitting in a totally sweat drenched linen dress <laughs> which is the only thing I can wear but yet my whole body is buzzing with exciting uh exciting awesome. feelings. <laughs> funnier. Okay perfect so <laughs> You just shared the first thing I was going to ask, which is how are you feeling in your body and what, what, is, what, are, you, what are your surroundings like? What's the temperature in this heat wave? Please say, say it in Celsius. <laughs> um, yes, I, well, I only know it's Celsius. Oh, good. <laughs> it is 28 in my room. It's probably quite a bit hotter outside. But I think heat isn't heat. You know, like this feels quite a bit hotter because we're in a stuffy city center mm -hmm. and there's no breathe right now so yeah yeah is it also humid mm, yeah pretty yeah mm -hmm. okay and um and you're in one of your aspirational middle-aged women linen dresses <laughs> yes exactly i <laughs> want to give some background to that because i have had a journey with dressing myself 
oh man, in my 20s and as a teen, I have ruined some really weird shit, got to tell you. And I've now come to this <laughs> time in my life where I'm like, actually, linen is the thing that feels the best by far on my body. And I just want to wrap myself in long flowing linen dresses for the rest of my life. And that's also marking a new chapter of coming into my middle age dreams prematurely, to be fair, because I'm only 30 <laughs> little bit, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've started wearing fashion sack dresses, mm. and, like big, anything that's big, baggy and loose. Um, so I'm with you. <laughs> They're so comfortable. I mean, all of this like tone, oh, middle-aged women. Actually, I think middle-aged women have figured it out. <laughs> totally. Um, technically, I think I could, I can be one now. I'm 40, so I can claim middle-aged woman, but without the snark. <laughs> <laughs> I think to me, it's just about caring less about what other people think, trusting my own intuition more. Mm. giving less shit mm. yeah prioritizing pleasure and mm. linen and dark chocolate and mm. slowness yeah and you've been sharing some pretty exquisite ice creams on your instagram <laughs> yes <laughs> so <laughs> that too right <laughs> mm -hmm. that too yes <laughs> okay so back to our bodies and writing <laughs> um I'm, uh, I just want to get a little more info from you on your state. And for our listeners, as I'm inquiring with Yarrow, and then I'm going to describe my own physical state, <clears throat> I'll get you to also just tune in with your own self. You know, if you're driving or you, you have to be focused on something, do it with a, a gentle inquiry. Don't bring all of your attention into your body. But even so, you just want to take note. And it's all going to weave together. We're co-creating a field of um, synergy, of connection with our different states. And it's going to influence our writing. So, Yarrow, you said that you're hot. And um, it's kind of that still sort of hot that feels hotter than it is. And um, that you're buzzing with excitement. What does that feel like in your body? Well, I am ovulating as we speak, <laughs> probably. <laughs> and I feel like there's just a lot of heat and movement being generated by these different states of being at the same time that come together this week. So I feel really excited about some business things. And then I have this like hormonal outward energy in my body. And then it's really warm as well. Mm -hmm. And this week, I also had a lot of time to kind of go with my energy levels. So I don't feel very restrictive, restrictive in what I have to do this week, which is really nice and beautiful and a big reason of why I work for myself. And how that manifests in my body. There's a couple of really funny side note sensations. For example, my, my skin just sticks together in a different way because it's so warm and sweaty. Mm. So it's a different body sensation than what I usually get. Um, and then I just feel like I, I'm sitting in the sun all the time, even though I'm a very pale ginger, I can't actually do that. <laughs> but this, this sensation of actually just needing, like it being okay to be still and yet being in this like energy exchange of warmth and creative flow with the sun in my room. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to get you to um, close your eyes if it helps. Uh, just bring your attention um, behind your eyes <clears throat> and hanging out with your attention behind your eyes with your eyes closed, not if you're driving though, listeners. Um, just notice uh, we're kind of tuning into the thinking energy that is always going on in ourselves and it lives in different parts of our body, but especially in our head and often behind our eyes. So just notice where the thinking energy is collected in your head. And then you're going to imagine that this attention behind your eyes, they're two marbles. And you're just going to lift your chin a little and you're going to ask those marbles to roll slowly back towards your central column, just above your spine. And when you're, those marbles land at the top of the central column, they're going to start 
dropping down. And we're aiming for our heart in front of our spine. So just keep asking the attention to kind of drop down. You might have to wiggle it. It might not want to move. That's okay. But we're, we're asking for our attention to start sliding down through that central column more into our body and out of our brainy thinking space. And when you get as close as you can to your heart, just picture those two marbles. They turn into eyeballs again and they open up and they're looking out through the heart space. You can open your actual eyes too if you want at this point. <clears throat> and just notice what might be different. So Yarrow, did you want to share what you're noticing right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, hmm. This was super interesting. I was smiling really widely as I was listening to you. And there was some resistance of like letting go and letting my thinking mind and my conscious seeing and taking information in drop down into my chest. And it felt very beautiful to think of this super literally. So I was really like thinking of my eyeballs somehow in my chest and thinking about what it would feel like and look like. And actually it's a really warm, cozy space and it's mm -hmm. really protected. Um, I've done some somatic experiencing work earlier in the year where one thing that came up was that I often, my left shoulder blade gets really tight because I'm kind of trying to wrap bones around my heart to you know mm -hmm. make it safer mm -hmm. and so part of that um work was really visualizing my ribcage as an already really stable beautiful contained space that doesn't need any extra tension or like controlling for my heart to be safe and my lungs to be expensive um, so it's really nice to reconnect with that space and to think about the literal colors that would be in there and like if i if those eyeballs wouldn't just see, but also feel in touch, it would be quite nice and squishy in there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so just double checking where your attention has gone. And if it has shifted out of the, the heart space, just drop it back in. And for like more um, tangible anchors for your attention to land, it's right in front of your spine where the, the central idea of our heart is, not our actual heart, but um, the mid sternum. So behind the middle of your sternum, the middle of your chest, but much snugged, much closer to the front of your spine. Okay, so now I'm gonna also get you to imagine that those beads are uh, eyeballs beaming open and they're also beaming out through your nipples. <laughs> Oh, so, Janelle, the things we do together. <laughs> <laughs> so our nipples can be like psychic organs of sensing and seeing and knowing. And let's just encourage that <laughs> connected to the heart. Now, here's, here's the next step. So you want to keep some of your attention in this heart space, beaming out through the nipples and the heart. You're ovulating and I... I'm on the first day of my period. <clears throat> so I'm going to bring in some of my experience to ground us. And um, so keeping our attention in the heart space, you're going to send some tendrils down, still going down your central column of your spine, all the way down into your pelvic bowl. And for um, folks without wombs or uteruses or ovaries, um, just hang out in the pelvis in the pelvic bowl and um, and imagine the energetic spaces as well if this still works for you as well so now we're aiming for that second bit of our attention to drop down into the front of our sacrum and our sacrum is that triangle shaped uh, bundle of fused vertebrae that is the bottom part of our spine just above the tailbone and um, attached to the pelvis so often it feels like your lower back uh, and sometimes you can feel a bit of a foamy pad on top of it uh, depending I'm a little water retentive right now so it's a little spongy feeling and you want your uh, attention and your energy to hang out again on the inside of that inside your body this is also known as the second chakra 
um, in Ayurvedic knowing. <clears throat> and here, what I want you to notice is the weightiness and the heaviness of the pelvis. It's bone. It's this circular structure of bone that contains us in our organs. So just allow the weightiness of that to anchor you, especially if you're feeling a little more buzzy and excited. So you don't want to get rid of the buzzy and excited, but you want to have some depth and weight and dimension so that you're still attached to the earth. Okay, so now take a nice breath in, wiggling your fingers and your toes, just noticing how you feel. And we're going to do three minutes of flow writing um, just to see what comes up. Now, if I do longer sessions of flow writing and with my memoir writing um, work, I often recommend that you're always looking for the story that wants to show up out of the flow writing so that you can move into personal story as well. Um, three minutes is a little shorter. So let's just do flow writing and see what shows up. Point form is totally okay. And if you're not able to write alongside us right at this moment, just indulge in these three minutes of being able to stay tuned in to all of the interesting, delicious, possibly uncomfortable sensations in your body as well. So I'm starting the timer now. All right, three minutes is up. <clears throat> mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is so fun. Do you want to share what showed up? Yeah, sure. It felt really nice and really fast. <clears throat> I wrote that I 
the first thing I wrote that I felt as we were thinking and starting to wriggle our fingers was that everything can be born out of darkness. Um, so I was thinking about the insides of my body and the creativity of that. Um, I said, especially when I finally start scheduling my workflow in alignment with my cycle, I've been talking about this for years, it really has to happen. <laughs> um, uh, I th some of it I can't actually read anymore because <laughs> my hand was in a really great flow. Um, I said it feels nice to, oh yeah, to see the pen flow over pages and pages of paper these days. And I can feel in my hip bones that I'm learning to trust my own mind and value my lived experience more. I need to be under a weighted blanket more often to, f to make sure I keep more of the warmth and creative energy my body generates in the spaces I want them in rather than scattered all over the place. Mm. Mm, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to share mine. <clears throat> and then we're actually going to do a second writing prompt. So um, I'll get you to just uh, holding what you wrote in yourself. Also just really receive my words and then we're going to just go right into the next three minute prompt to see what comes up by what is generated and shared. Ache in sacrum, spine, back of head, so much sitting. I love walking, but my period feels like sludge, heavy sludge, slow moving. I've become a glacier, an inch of me movement a year but hot, not cold. If a volcano's magma were flowing in slow, slow motion, that's me in my pelvis today. My belly does not want muscles encasing it. It wants to swell and expand. Mm, that was beautiful. So just as a note, um, it is okay to have really bad, terrible writing too. And that happens with <laughs> flow, flow writing. <laughs> <laughs> we embrace all the ranges of our creative <laughs> capacity. <laughs> okay, so another three minutes. Let's just see what shows up.
Okay. This <laughs> goes by fast. It does. Okay. All right. Do you want to share again? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a bit jumbled up, but I will share where I was going with this. Um, I, I was saying that I really love how writing together and being in engagement with with the physical pages is creating a sense of intimacy, um, which I love. And and then I can again not read what I wrote. Um, oh yeah, and then I said, listening to Jonah just now, I feel so inspired to write out in nature more often. Um, I'd like to write about the times I swim in the waterfall and how these experiences shape the ways in I, I inhabit my body. And I think that there's a holding back because I am aware that really truly embodying and recognizing how my body is a landscape will if, you know, inevitably in some ways crack my heart open in the way I engage with climate change and catastrophes like that. And I yet want to do it anyway. <laughs> uh -huh. That's really rich. Okay, let me read mine. Darkness as potential, darkness as generative, darkness as a space to go into and explore. A list of dark places, basements with no lights on and no windows. Root cellars, caves, me under my blankets in the middle of the night. Me trapped in spinning shame generating thoughts. Me in a float tank floating in space, warm and salty and held. Mm, beautiful. I could taste the salt. <laughs> <laughs> so just add one of my um, writing techniques that is great for generating further ideas and prompts and um, memories is list making is to start with a, it doesn't even really matter what the prompt is, you can literally just open any book anywhere and choose a paragraph, read it, and then set a timer and write and see where it takes you. Or tune in with your body, same thing, just pick a location, hmm, shoulder, right shoulder. No one can see it except Yarrow right now, but <laughs> kind of tapping my right shoulder with my right fingertip and I'm just noticing sensation and kind of wiggling around and it's generating all sorts of ideas and sensations. And then <clears throat> you just start flow writing, but the second that lists or ideas start to show up, just start list making. And it's so rich and amazing and things will show up that um, weren't accessible otherwise. And then especially with writing your own life story, um, or just exploring memories or wanting to write stories, then you just take anything out of that list and you set a longer time, timed prompt with the intention to really just explore the experience of whatever item it is on the list. So if I look back at my own list, me under my blankets in the middle of the night, ooh, <laughs> or maybe not even the middle of the night, but times when I've, hidden myself under blankets let's see where that takes me it's pretty fun and exciting so. yeah it is thank you so much for sharing i yeah i really love that um i you know as i already said i love everything you do and i'm really excited for your program i'm i'm this year i have started to journal every morning again and it's been so helpful i really feel like uh oh it's good to look back through I'm my not journal sure if you now. Can hear me, I um, Yaro, but feel like um, frozen there's a real sense of shifting you. and changing. That's that's good to watch. I'm just gonna wait. and change as they work through this process. Oh, am I hearing you now? Yes, you're back. Okay. You're back. Hi. Okay. Do, so do, you, do you repeat the question? Um, where I stopped hearing you was you started saying, this year I've been journaling every day. Mm -hmm. Okay, and cool. Then it stopped. So, okay, I will just repeat that. So I just said um, I was journaling every day this year. I've kind of played with different daily practices. Um, 
I had a long spell of daily, uh, of a specific daily meditation that I did. And I found it really, really helpful. You know, like in a way I've been journaling since I was in primary school, but I haven't felt as committed to it as I have this year. And it's really nice now to read back through these journals and to see the patterns appear and to see things shift because I think in this age of social media overwhelm and comparison, it's so easy to feel stuck and to feel like nothing is ever moving and changing and we're trying really hard on all these different fronts, but actually we're still the same person. And so that's been really helpful for me. And yeah, I'm just wondering, like, what are you seeing people experience in this kind of process? Uh, what has happened? Like, when did you start it and what has changed for you? Why are you so excited about it? Oh, uh, let's see. I think, let, let me start with um, what I'm noticing in people doing my process. I get all sorts of people signing up for my course, which is so thrilling because there's nothing more beautiful than um, a group of very different people that are really committed to showing up and being real with each other. And it's so rich. And so having said that, there's people are in so many different ages and stages and life experiences. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting. Okay, so the common theme is an incredible hunger for connection, for community, um, but specific to self, for understanding um, purpose and finding hope in that process. I think that these days, one of the big challenges for so many people is a feeling of despair. Um, <clears throat> politics, are, uh, politics are about power and the people um, that are gaining power all over the world are increasingly very dangerous and they're stripping away um, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I just want to name it anyways. They're stripping away um, and making more powerless most of, of the people in the world. Um, and, and Mother Earth is suffering and all, all of the news about our climate, it, it's not uncommon for me to hear from people um, that I know saying that we're going extinct as a species, we're, we're killing the earth. Um, <clears throat> and all of this really generates a lot of despair. And, a, and it, you know, it may be true, it may not be true. What is really true is that um, things are changing very quickly and they are due to our collective behavior as humans over the last uh, several centuries, but especially the last few decades. And um, when, I, I heard these really wonderful talks at this gathering I went to last summer by really fascinating people that are changing the world, like lawyers fighting Chevron oil corporations on behalf of indigenous people and um, just the most amazing people. And their common message was um, the antidote to despair is action. And it doesn't matter what the action is. It just has to be something so that you don't sink into the hopelessness um, and paralysis of despair. And so I think that one of the um, actions that we can take is just around our own personal self-knowing and our own, um, our own personal tiny bits and pieces of behavior, the things that we can do, which can sometimes feel so useless and powerless in the face of these astronomical um, entrenched structural problems um, in our world. But what I see in, um, in my students in my course is that really taking the time to explore yourself through the context of your life story and then um, through the context of history and culture and um, the forces that bring us to where we are gives a, a sense of purpose and agency and meaning that is really empowering, right? Um, I know for myself, uh, I am deeply attached to the land that I grew up on in the Yukon Territory, which is in the far north of Canada. 
I'm not currently living there, but I love it like crazy and I've always loved it. And um, it's, it's, a, it's interesting to think, well, wow, but how did I get there? It's not like I have deep roots. Most of my ancestors come from um, Europe and the British Isles. And <clears throat> the fact that I was born in Whitehorse General Hospital in Whitehorse in the Circumpolar North <laughs> um, on Tan Kwachan and Kwanlin Dun First Nations territory, those are the people indigenous to Whitehorse, which is also uh, Whitehorse is a colonial name. Um, all of those questions are actually really relevant to who we are and how we are where we are. So following that thread, right, leads me back to um, my dad's parents who moved up to the Yukon when he was a child. Okay, so that's how my dad ended up there. And my mom's parents um, met in Dawson City, which was um, kind of founded through the Klondike Gold Rush in 1898, which was, you know, like the, the era of gold rushes around the world are the craziest, bizarre, most bizarre um, land changing, culture changing events that don't get enough attention from that context, I think. But um, they, they weren't there for the gold rush. <laughs> they moved there in the 1950s and I st actually still don't know why, right? But probably it was due to um, jobs being available because uh, often people are moving around because um, of poverty or opportunity or curiosity. But I think a lot of it is like, where can I try to make my life better? And then, but where did they come from? And you can just go down that rabbit hole, right? Of holy moly, the fact that I was born in Whitehorse in the Yukon in Canada is actually attached to so many strange stories and reasons and things I don't understand or know about. And um, how do I make sense of myself, where I am loving the land that I love when... I'm not indigenous to that land and I, I've been cut off from all roots of where I may be indigenous to and the languages I came out of, none of which are actually originally English, right? Like it's, I'm going down a rabbit hole describing this to you, but um, I find it so exciting to cultivate um, that uh, kind of inquiry, particularly because our, the, a lot of the cultures we're living in are so oriented around individualism and um, rah, 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 law of attraction stuff, where all you have to do is think yourself into the state you want to be. And I, you know, I actually just hate that because um, we are more than just little individual units functioning, right? But when we get raised in a way that teaches us to think that we just have to think harder and try harder and figure it out all by ourselves. It totally erases the fact that we're social creatures, um, that community matters, that, that there isn't a lot of easily accessible community these days in real life. Um, and where was I going with that? That, um, Reclaiming roots and the greater collective knowledge, including um, <clears throat> cultural gifts like ancient tales, fairy tales, myths, it actually opens up a possibility that um, we can tap into greater knowledge and greater power than what's contained just inside our own little brains. That there are forces out there, like, uh, so archetypes are a wonderful example of an energetic force mm -hmm. that, is, that is in the world, more than one force. And we can learn how to tune in and draw towards us and step into like the ocean, you know, but still be ourselves, but richer. <laughs> so I don't know what you got out of that. <laughs> yeah, <I hope. laughs> so much, <laughs> so much. No, I really love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I think after this episode comes out, you'll be running a workshop. Is that right? And do you want to just say where people can find you and what you're offering and if they want to know more and maybe do some of these writing exercises, what they can they do? 
Uh, okay, this is a great question. So I have two um, wonderful freebie uh, PDFs available, um, which will give you some tools to write more. One is uh, 10 impactful uh, memoir writing prompts, um, in which I encourage list making. <laughs> and you can find that at personalmythmaking.com forward slash, oh, shoot, memories. We'll, we'll add it to the show notes either way. Yeah. <laughs> Let's add it to the show notes. Yeah. You can find them in Yarrow's show notes. The other <laughs> PDF is called Writing Through Painful Memories and Trauma. And this is especially important when people want to work with life stories, but they're scared of um, stepping back into difficult times. There are ways using your body to actually be able to do that work without getting overwhelmed or re-traumatized or... Uh, plunging yourself right into the middle of distress. Um, so I've got some resources around that as well. And um, you can find me online at janellehardy.com. And you can learn more about my Art of Personal Mythmaking course at personalmythmaking.com. But the specific workshop I'd love to invite you to, which I teach semi-regularly, is a two-hour workshop called Outline Your Memoir. Um, it's free and I use fairy tales as part of the process. It's very fun. Not just fairy tales, ancient tales, actually your favorite ancient tale, whatever that is. It could be a family tale. It could be a spiritual text. It could be a fairy tale, a myth, folklore, just has to be older than one generation. Um, and it's pretty magic and it's very interactive. So you'll be, you'll be super productive in this workshop and feel like you have a sense of your life through the workshop so that sounds amazing i'll be there except it's my travel day damn it i'll watch the replay <laughs> yeah there'll be a replay <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah thank you so much for sharing that i just want to say that i feel so honored that i get to share so many beautiful offerings on this podcast and i really love that we have created this community and this somewhat alternative economy though we still operate within capitalism and I love that with its limitations but I feel like I just really love gifting these conversations and knowing that we have created business models where we can share so much freely and anyone is able and allowed and invited to take that and see if it feels good for them and then if we if it feels right for them at any point they can make a deeper commitment and um, you know, take your course, but there's no need to. I really love this generosity of what we're doing and seeing that, that as a like as a continuation across the different episodes that we're having. I feel like if someone just came across this podcast and is like burning through 20 episodes over a weekend, there's so much to engage with and explore. Mm -hmm. And I'm just really, really grateful for the internet. I mean, just 30 years ago, this would have yeah. been unimaginable. And this is so cool. So yeah. Yeah, even yeah. just 20 years ago, it still yeah. wasn't, it wasn't commonly used. I'm still of the age that didn't really have internet <laughs> in high school, right? <laughs> so 40 and up is like a different, it's sort of split between one world and the other. And yeah. Um, but I just want to add, because I'm pretty sure all the listeners echo this, that um, you're a gift to the world, Yarrow. And honestly, I also benefit from the people that you collect and praise and share, not only on your podcast, but also on your Instagram. I always know that if I tune into um, where you show up online, I'm going to find some beauty and fierceness and inspiration and heartbreak and joy and um, awesome people that <laughs> I'll want to collect and learn from as well. So I think that's such a gift that you offer all of us as well. Oh, thank you so much. I'm blushing over here. <laughs> It's kind of like the pink of the day and the sweat melting into actual sweat <laughs> so smiling and blushing as well. So and then your wall is uh, is a uh, very green next to that pink. It's quite the visual statement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my sister painted that. That is not my just, even if people can't see it right now, I just want everyone to know. I would never paint a wall for a green. That was my sister. <laughs> but, but yeah, we will put everything in the show notes. If someone got really excited but didn't have a chance to write it down, 
giggle away and just relax into the knowing that everything is there in the show notes. And I might see some of you at the workshop. That would be actually, you know, we have already identified. I can't make it, damn it. But, yeah. but I, I will energetically see some of you at the <laughs> workshop. <laughs> Thank you so much, Danelle. <laughs> Thank you.